brings life to Texas. To manage this valuable resource, Texans are working together to conserve and augment their water supply. After years of research development, cloud seeding is being used throughout much of Texas to increase rainfall. This partnership involves water management districts, farmers, ranchers, and municipalities. People working together is the hallmark of the rain enhancement programs in Texas. This cooperation even extends beyond the state's border into New Mexico. Everyone stands to benefit. The real key thing here is we're saving our underground water. That's, that's the important issue right here. That's, that's our goal, I think, is to save, save our water for future generations. Whether or not we survive, we depend on rainwater for everything. And it's what waters our grass and what feeds our cattle and what waters our, provides the water for our house and everything. I mean, we just have to have, we have to have rainwater. The only water we have on these ranches here is uh, water we catch in the ponds. We have no wells, no underground water. And we're directly independent on, I mean, dependent on rainfall. We've got to have more water. Uh, we can't, uh, our wells, we can't drill any deeper. We can't drill any more wells. I irrigate out of every water formation that we have. I do dry land farming, which we need the rain enhancers for that. I irrigate, I have permits out of the Nueces River, and the Espantosa Lake, and I have wells in the Creza Aquifer, and also some of our upper wells are in the edge of the Leona Gravel. So I use water from every source that's available that we have in Zalala County. It's quite simple. Without water, uh, there wouldn't be any ranchers, I don't think, in the state of Texas unless they had some very deep water wells. Uh, water is, is a, 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 a extreme uh, necessity to be in the, in the ranching uh, industry. Texas's rain enhancement effort from Amarillo and the Panhandle to near Laredo along the Rio Grande is coordinated by the Texas Natural Resource Conservation Commission and its senior meteorologist, George Bomar. Additionally, each program has its own manager. My role with the TNRCC is to administer a statewide rain enhancement program. We do that through a series of interlocal agreements or contracts with political subdivisions that are sponsoring the operational cloud seeding in Texas. The current projection of the population of the state of Texas shows a doubling of the population within 35 years and a more likely uh, doubling within 25 years. So we're, we're really working toward recharging the aquifers, which we hope uh, will bring back some stream flow uh, and will begin to uh, impact the cities. We also may be able to recharge the aquifers that they're drawing their water from. CRMWD got involved in cloud seeding back in 1971 and the reason for that was we were in a very severe drought. We were looking for some tools, some strategies that we could use to increase precipitation, rainfall, we put water in our reservoirs. The authority was created in 1993 to conserve, preserve, and protect the Edwards Aquifer. It's a really unique aquifer, a sole source aquifer to 1.5 million people, the only water supply really for this entire region. Cloud seeding is just another um, tool uh, that, that can be used to uh, increase recharge of the aquifer to uh, provide water in the areas uh, that are the highest demand in the artesian zone uh, to reduce demand and consumption uh, of the aquifer. For example, if we, can, if we can take and increase the amount of rain that we get by one or two inches over the entire area that we're operating in, that'll result in several hundred thousand acre feet of water going into the aquifer or not coming out of the aquifer. For the annual budget of $500,000, the cheapest water that we can get any place. Here in the southern high plains of Texas, we're always a little short on precipitation, and uh, we, we uh, irrigate a lot of cotton. We're the cotton patch of the world. We irrigate about three million acres, and uh, one of the first things we did was do an economic analysis of how much uh, a one inch of additional precipitation would be worth for. Uh, additional inch of rainfall on cotton is equivalent to 100 pounds of additional lint per acre, uh, 700 pounds of corn, uh, 
and then 10 bushels of wheat and 500 pounds of grain sorghum. If you take that and multiply that out across the area, uh, you have an equivalent of uh, $81 million for direct benefit to the growers for this one inch of rainfall. To the area, you have an economic benefit of uh, roughly $283 million. In most of the area of the state of Texas, maybe not so much out west, but uh, certainly in the east, the central, and the southern part, water has been plentiful. And uh, basic economics is supply and demand when there's a high supply, and uh, the price is cheap. So we, as folks in South Texas, have never placed, I don't believe, the value that needs to be placed on the water. And so that's why cloud seeding has not been done in the past year. But as our population is growing and there's greater and greater demands on the water supply that exists, uh, we're finding that we need to start looking for other ways. What we saw the potential in cloud seeding was one, that it could limit or help augment the irrigation that's done in this area, therefore decreasing the pumpage which would automatically increase what's in the aquifer. And that's how we started. Now we're looking at, with our own equipment and going to a 12 month project so we could be doing this year round. Oh, I'm, I'm completely for the project. I think it's, uh, uh, it's not only politically correct, I think it's uh, very cost effective. Uh, there's a lot of other things we can do, but they don't come anywhere close to four and a half cents an acre. I think that uh, it's, it's interesting to me that the people we're really helping, and I'm talking about from just a cost, a money, money standpoint, are the people that live uh, as I say, where the pavement runs around their houses. I'm talking about the people in the cities uh, uh, that have their water bill reduced because of rainfall events uh, and the increased uh, uh, capacity for, for drinking water, I think is very, very significant. To fund these efforts, each project is responsible for one half of the cost, while the people of Texas, through their legislature, provide the other half. Without water economic life, uh, th there's nothing that a community uh, can do without water resources. The, the, the towns can't grow for its population providing drink, drinking water. Business needs water. Uh, we're an agricultural community. Obviously everything we do out here is dependent upon water. This is a relatively inexpensive way to do, to, to preserve it. I mean you compare that to building a dam or a reservoir nowadays. Uh, gosh, uh, you know, cloud seeding and rain enhancements are relatively inexpensive. Plus, uh, I think the second part of this is it's a cost share so that you've got the farmers and ranchers, uh, you know, putting their money up as well. So if they believe in it, it makes sense for the rest of us to believe in it as well. A beneficial seeding program cannot exist without a strong scientific foundation. During decades of investigation, research efforts in Florida, Texas, and Thailand indicate that cloud seeding, as implemented in Texas, does increase rainfall. The research we've done to date very much does corroborate the perceptions of people that when cloud seeding is done in a timely way and in a, an appropriate way, it does have a positive impact in that it enables clouds to do a better job of yielding rainfall. The way that we started measuring and trying to quantify the benefit that we got out of the program. And this started back in, in 1971. We used the tools that we had available to us at that time. And we started trying to quantify the benefit of the program looking at cotton yields in here. And we compared non-irrigated cotton yields within our target area to cotton yields outside of the target area. And I guess over 28 years worth of data, we've seen a little bit over a 20% increase in those cotton yields. We're showing compared to areas outside the target area to rain stations inside the target area about a 21% increase in rainfall over the whole entire cloud seeding period. You cannot really do this comparison from a cloud to cloud basis. It, it needs to be done over the years, smoothed out for as long as we've done it to, to show w whether it's working or not. I have ridden on a number of flights. Um, everyone's almost different. Uh, uh, w when you enjoy flying, you enjoy seeing the clouds, but, but most of all I enjoy going up there and going through a process and then being able to see the results of that process, which is rain falling to the ground. Here, the concept of cloud seeding is explained. 
Clouds form when moist air rises in an updraft and cools to condensation. Tiny visible water drops form on minute dust and salt particles. As the moist air rises and cools further, these water drops grow larger. In many clouds, the drops fail to grow large enough to fall as rain. The challenge of cloud seeding is to produce raindrops large enough to fall before the cloud dissipates. The seeding techniques used to enhance rainfall in Texas deal with cold clouds in which most of the drops in the updraft are not frozen. Despite cloud air temperatures below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius, these drops are super cooled. Seeding with small particles called ice nuclei, such as silver iodide, is done to freeze these super cold drops, creating ice particles which grow larger and consume the remaining water drops. Seeding can be done near cloud top or cloud base. In top seeding, the aircraft flies in the supercooled cloud updraft and disperses the nuclei produced by flares which are released from the aircraft. Base seeding is done in updrafts using fixed flares or burners attached to the aircraft. The updraft carries the nucleant particles to the supercooled portion of the cloud where freezing takes place. This technique works best when the clouds cover large areas and have strong, organized updrafts. Seeding supercooled clouds makes use of the principle that when water changes from liquid to ice, heat is released into the air. Clouds thrive on this heat. The seeding enhanced ice mass is supported by the heat invigorated updraft. Eventually, the ice falls and melts as rain. When this increased rainfall reaches the ground, an outflow is produced, generating regions of convergence where new clouds can grow and might also be seeded. In clouds with large raindrops, the heat released as the drops freeze may be large enough for the cloud to support the increased ice mass while continuing to grow to great heights. This produces additional rain. According to the research of doctors Woodley and Rosenfeld, who provided the scientific basis for cloud seeding in Texas, this type of seeding can produce rainfall increases of more than 100 percent from individual clouds and 50 percent or more from large groups of clouds. Woodley and Rosenfeld emphasize, however, that seeding only works when there are suitable clouds within the target area. To measure the rainfall resulting from cloud seeding projects, meteorologists have used standard radar equipment for many years. Now they can do so with greater accuracy using a new digital computer-based system called Titan installed at each project site. The Titan system really gives us an advantage uh, over what we uh, used to use. Uh, we have used digitized uh, uh, radar or uh, visual uh, aids before where they were digitized, but this is now in a volume scan mode so we can look at the uh, full volume uh, 3D aspect of the uh, atmosphere, if you will. And actually Titan even takes it one step further and, and brings it into a 4D, uh, four dimensions, adding time to it also because we have uh, our, the ability to forecast where the cells are going to be tracking. So not only can you look at a cell in a uh, flat, uh, uh, if you look at a flat scan, a flat picture, like a piece of paper, a drawing that way, but now we can also look at the vertical structure of it with Titan, and then we can also look at the time and where it's moving. And that helps us out a lot with uh, trying to track where the storms are going and, and uh, are they growing, are they declining, and where we want to position the aircraft and which cells are the better cells to work with. I've noticed you can get a better idea what the pilots are seeing as far as, uh, or, or going through, as far as being embedded or anything to that effect. It's been a real help since we, since we added the, the Titan program to the, to the operations. In terms of uh, what we see in terms of the pilot would be that Titan allows you to put the plane on the screen along with the activity. For instance, if you have activity somewhere along the target area here, the plane would show up as a line in terms of its flight track. So that will point you into a direction of where the activity is. Normally on a radar screen you just get activity. Here you get activity in the aircraft and it makes it easier for you to direct the pilot towards suitable activity. What our ultimate goal here is, is rain enhancement, getting water on the ground. 
and this is a great tool to help us as a meteorologist. It really helps me locate the best areas that, that we can work and become better at what we are doing here. The Texas programs are also the first to use satellite imagery to guide seeding operations and detect seeding signatures for later analysis. Although great progress has been made in documenting the effects of cloud seeding, there is still much which is not understood. Therefore, it is vital for the partnership between research and operations to continue. Recent efforts have included the use of a specialized research aircraft to study ice crystals in convective clouds. A new satellite technique was used to evaluate cloud structure and how it is altered by seeding. And a high-performance jet aircraft was launched to make high-level measurements near the tops of vigorous Texas clouds. High concentrations of supercooled liquid water were detected for the first time to incredibly cold temperatures. This was previously thought impossible. These unparalleled measurements strengthen the physical basis for cloud seeding in Texas. In addition to furthering the operational efforts throughout Texas, the valuable results from all of these research efforts will be utilized as part of an internship program to train new pilots and meteorologists. The flares used to seed clouds are a key component to any operational program. Recent laboratory testing has allowed the Texas Weather Modification Association to make amazing progress in developing new, advanced seeding flares for use throughout Texas. We started to manufacture flares in order to achieve a flare that we thought would do a better job than one that we could go purchase. And uh, we're still doing that, and I hope we'll always do that, no matter where they're manufactured. I hope that that will be the, uh, the standard by which we do it, and that is quality first. We're standardizing the flares we use, and I think that's going to give us a lot more consistency. Dr. William Finnegan, an expert and pioneer in the field of pyrotechnic seating flares, has guided this effort. Dale Bates asked me to come to Texas to work with the Concho Cartridge Company people to set up a production line for pyrotechnic generators for silver iodide nucleants for weather modification. And that's what I've been doing, uh, it's actually the past two years, is working with the people to train them to make reliable, safe, functioning pyrotechnics that would do the job that uh, we thought was necessary for the state of Texas weather modification programs. The vital resource that is water. Its management is a great responsibility. And increasing the supply has always been a dream. A dream which is coming closer to reality as Texans work together to harvest water from the skies. Weather modification is one tool, one vital tool, one very important tool that must be used if Texas is going to remain as one of the greatest states in the United States.